Well, hi there, boys and girls. Before we get after these two AP questions, I'd like to remind you that math can be pretty neat. And let's take a look at a story. My story, Madeline. Madeline owns a baseball stadium. Madeline is building a fence 400 feet away from home plate. So let's take a look at that picture. There, Madeline built a fence in her baseball stadium. Now, that's not a really interesting story, but it was it got really interesting when Cody figured out that Madeline was building a baseball stadium. So Cody said, wait a minute, I'm going to come out to your baseball stadium and I'm going to hit a baseball. I'm going to hit a baseball and I'm going to hit it at 150 feet per second at an angle of 20 degrees from the ground. Now I also am going to hit the baseball at three feet off the ground. And let's see if I hit a home run in Madeline's new baseball stadium. And so there it goes and the crowd is going wild. And there's the fence that Madeline built before the baseball got there. And oh, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like it. But then Cody was like, wait a minute. I know what I what we're missing here. Go back to what white was here. Um, that there was a wind at my back, Mr. G. And so the wind was blowing at 8.8 .8 feet per second. Now, it is clear to the world that Madeline built the fence 400 feet from home plate, Cody hits the baseball, and with 8.8 .8 feet per second wind at his back, it clearly goes over the fence. See, math can actually be pretty neat. Let's get after a couple of free response questions now with parametrics. And I, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to work all of these out. I'm just going to ask some questions, and that's what I want you to come to class with tomorrow. I want you to have these questions down so that you guys can work together on this. So off we go. We got a particle that's starting at point A on the positive x-axis, so it's starting here, and it travels along the curve from A to B to C to D. So I'm putting the little arrows on here to show the movement of the particle. And then we're given uh, that the position function is x of t, y of t, we should already know that, they're differentiable, and x prime is given to us as this formula. Now y prime is not given to us. I guess they want us to figure that out. They're being sneaky. All right, at time t equals 9, the particle reaches its final position at point D. So it, I guess it takes 9 seconds, 9 minutes, whatever, to get from A to B to C to D. So here we go. At point C is dy dt positive. Here is point C. So let's take a look at the movement. What does dy dt mean? dy dt is the rate of change of the y coordinate. Any derivative will tell you whether something is increasing or if it's decreasing. So when you answer this question, you're just going to have to ask yourself, is dy dt positive, that would mean at point C, my y coordinate would have to be increasing. If dy dt is negative, my y coordinate would be decreasing. A derivative will tell you if something is increasing or if it's decreasing. So you'll just have to look at the little picture and see if you can figure that out tomorrow. The same question for x. Is dx dt positive? What does dx dt tell you? dx dt, I'm just going to put quotes here, dx dt is the rate of change of the x coordinate. So you'll just need to read this question in class and figure out is the y coordinate increasing or is the y coordinate decreasing as you go from a to b to c to d. And the same question for x. What is the x coordinate doing as you move along that path? If you know what's going on, you'll be able to say whether the derivative was positive or if the derivative was negative. All right, part b. The slope of the curve is undefined at point B. Well, that's clear because that is a sharp turn. That's a cusp. So yes, the derivative is undefined there. And we're supposed to figure out at what time t is the particle at point B. So my question for you is, how can slope be undefined? How is it possible for slope to be undefined and what does that mean? Now your slope equation in parametrics is dy dx equals dy dt over dx dt. I'm going to have to scoot this down just a little bit. Over dx dt. How can you make a fraction 
undefined. How is it possible for this to be does not exist or infinity? What will you have to do? So that's what you're going to have to think about there. Once you figure that out, then you should be able to find the, the value for t for the particle at point b. Now point, part c is a little tricky. The line tangent to the curve at the point 8, x of 8, y of 8, has equation y equals 5 ninths x minus 2. y equals 5 ninths x minus 2. All right, so let's make sure that we understand that's a 5 there. All right, here we go. What is this? What did you learn in Algebra 1? If you have y equals mx plus b, what does that number represent? You should know what 5 ninths equals. 5 ninths equals m, which for us is equal to what? What does this equal? Hint, 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 hint. Okay, so you know that we've got that fraction there. So you are going to want to set this equal to 5 ninths. dy dt over dx dt equals 5 ninths. That's how you're going to start that. Now, do you know dy dt or dx dt? You know an equation for this? Yes. But you do not know this part, correct? Yes, Mr. D, that's correct. Now, you have to find a velocity vector and a speed. In order to find a velocity vector, you are going to need x prime and y prime. Velocity vector is x prime of t comma y prime of t at the point 8. So I guess at t equals 8, I need to rewrite this as we need x prime of 8 and y prime of 8. Now x prime of 8 is pretty simple because they gave you x prime. You can plug 8 into your x prime, but they did not give you y prime. So how are you going to figure this out? This is what you're going to use right here you know that y prime over x prime gives you 5 ninths at the point 8. So you should be able to use this relationship to figure this part out right here. Now what is speed? You have an equation for speed. Speed is the Pythagorean theorem on your velocity vector. So once you figure that out, you can do this. So x prime squared plus y prime squared. So that's how you'll start part C. Now part D asks us to find how far apart are points A and D, the initial and final positions respectively of the particle. A and D are on the x-axis. So we want to figure out how far apart they are. So I want to find the difference in this x-coordinate. How can you, talking about D here, what can you do to the derivative of x to figure out the change in x from a to d. And how long did this take? Well, this took it told us up here it took 9 seconds. So how can you find the x coordinate at 9 minus the x coordinate at 0? What will give you this if you have x prime? What can you put right here to give you this notation? And that's what you're going to have to talk think about and talk about in your group for that. All right, so let's go on to a non-calculator question and ask some questions about this. You'll be working this together as well. Part A, so we've got a particle moving in the plane. We've got an x of t equation and a y of t equation. So they're not trying to keep us in the dark about y of t. So part A, find the velocity vector and find the speed. You should be able to do that. You have two equations for that. So if you don't know how to find the velocity vector and the speed, you better find out tomorrow or ask a buddy. Part B. Find dy dx in terms of t and then find the limit as t approaches infinity. Now this is not going to be hard. If you have been awake in class, you know what this equals. dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. So you'll just have to find those derivatives and you'll have to and that will give you dy dx. Now the next question is we want to find the limit as t approaches infinity. And you're going to have a fraction. And we have learned since pre-cal, if you have a fraction, how do you t 
find the limit as t approaches infinity. You're going to have to think about, is this bottom heavy? Is this top heavy? Or if they match, it's going to be the ratio of the coefficients. So those are the three rules you're going to have to talk about. So you'll find dy dt, put it over dx dt, and you'll just have to ask yourself those three questions for part b. Now part c says, find each value t at which the line tangent to the path of the particle is horizontal or explain why none exists. So how can the path be horizontal? What does it mean for the path to be horizontal? Horizontal means what kind of slope? So I'll put a blank there. What kind of slope? And you should be either put a zero here or it uh, does not exist. And then you're going to have to ask yourself, how can I make my slope zero? How can this be zero? Do I set the top equal to zero or the bottom equal to zero? Then you're going to have to figure out if that's possible. Can that equal zero or can it be undefined? It depends on what you guys say to part C. All right, part D, find each value t at which the line tangents to the path of the particle is vertical. What does vertical sl slope mean? How can something have a vertical slope? Is that undefined? Is that zero? And that all depends on your answer for dy dx. So you'll need to talk about what do I need to do with dy dx and how can I make dy dx be, well, represent a vertical slope. So you're going to be working on these in groups. If you have these questions together, you guys should be able to figure these out, and I will see you then.